small and an identical building, but it, I felt that it, we'd gone down a route which was, I felt actually was trashy and realised that we wanted to be making a most serious thing at the whole expo and that the, there was this Millennium Seed Bank project where they were collecting 25% of all the world's plant species and the, the only idea, and we all know that plants and trees are beautiful, I've never met someone who goes, oh, I don't like trees. <laughs> um, but seeds seem so fundamental that one seed could be the reason that your grandmother lived another 20 years because of a medicine that was developed from it, or a crop that is the basis of the economy of one particular country. And just thought, at an expo where there are 250 pavilions all fighting for your attention, um, the only way that you could sort of stand out in this mentalness was to have one thing with one power. So the day that we met, um, we, we were going to speak to the directors of the seed bank because the only thing that would make that form work, it, it, it felt that the, there were 100 million people coming to the expo. It was going to be physically impossible for 100 million people to go inside our pavilion. And so the outside needed to be a manifestation of the inside. And so this idea of this texture, phenomenal texture, and the meaning of each piece of that texture was that there was a different seed species in each end, um, was key. So I tried, to, I mean, I'm not very good at being cool. Um, and so I had this meeting, and we were trying to do I look really enthusiastic, or do I look like I've got lots of other ideas? We didn't have. This was what made that idea work. And so we, we had the discussion, and someone called Wolfgang Stuppi, um, who's one of the main scientists there, uh, said yes, and Paul Smith, who's the head of the, said yes, and they, they managed to get us a quarter of a million seeds. Um, and so we had these 66,000 seeders, so that when you went inside, this, this um, uh, structure, uh, so this, for, so, Eight, eight million people went inside this for the six months it was there. And so for those six months it was the most visit, visited British tourist attraction, including in Britain. Um, but the, so it was the daylight coming through the seven and a half metres of each one of these optical hairs that was illuminating it. But, um, when you got the brief that said you have to be in the first five, what did you think about that? We were given half the budget of the other main Western nations, um, and, and actually one of the main advisors, John Sorrell, I think is there, who worked with us to, to try to help us work with government to make this be uh, possible to happen, and um, to not just feel that the UK pavilion needed to be, um, to be this. Sorry, what was your question just then? How did you adapt to this demand to be so one of the brief, yeah, five the, the brief, budget? Well, we knew that at this moment, all over the, the planet, you know, within a few weeks, it, the governments of all these different countries were saying to a design team, could you design the pavilion for Poland, for Russia, for all these different countries, and was probably saying, show that we have a great history, show that we have good food, show me a good place to go on holiday to, show me how we have a good economy, and you get reading, so you were reading a brief that you knew everyone else had the same brief. And you thought, well, we all tackle the brief in the same way. And you go, oh, yes, yeah, I'll try it all. Um, whereas, um, at the very end, it just had this little line, and the British are known for being gentlemen, and at the very end it just had, they'll be voting, and at, at the expo, when he's voting, be in the top five. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, that was really that was the most useful part of the brief because that allowed you to focus the discussion with government. And say, that, all of that